Welcome to the Mid Diary YouTube channel once again. Today we are going to discuss about the anatomy of trigeminal nerve. I am Hamna Zinat from Faculty of Medicine, University of Jaffna. Okay. We all know there are 12 cranial nerves and the trigeminal is the fifth one. And it is considered as the largest nerve. Here we are going to discuss about this nerve on four sections nuclei, root, trigeminal ganglion, and finally branches. There are two roots, sensory and motor, so this nerve is considered as mixed nerve. Let's move on to the nuclei of this nerve. There are three sensory nuclei and one motor nuclei originate in central nervous system midbrain, pons, and medulla. Sensory nuclei are located in midbrain, pons, medulla, and upper part of the spinal cord. They are named in order mesencephalic nucleus, main sensory nucleus, and spinal nucleus. The motor nuclei arise in the level of the pons medial to the main sensory nucleus. The fibers arising from these nuclei formed roots. The sensory fibers formed sensory root that is large and single and the motor fibers form motor root that is small and it is always passed below the sensory root. These two roots are going far away to the trigeminal cave. Okay, let's discuss about the trigeminal cave. It is truly a cave-like structure formed by arachnoid line durameter. So in this picture we can see above the petrous bone and below the tentorium cerebelli, the durameter is invaginate to form a cave-like space. So in this space, sensory root and motor root are passing. The sensory root expands into the trigeminal ganglion. Trigeminal ganglion is a large flat and crescentic structure. And here the motor root passes below the sensory root separately that won't sign up with this ganglion. Let's discuss about the trigeminal ganglion. What is ganglion? Ganglion is a group of cell bodies outside the central nervous system. So here, the trigeminal ganglion is a middle cranial fossa structure. We all know in the middle cranial fossa, there is a petrous part of temporal bone. In this petrous bone has impression for lodging trigeminal ganglion. So that is called trigeminal ganglion. So the trigeminal ganglion lies on the trigeminal impression of petrous bone. Okay, let's go more deeply into the cave. We said already the trigeminal cave is formed by two layers of meninges. So the posterior half of the cave has subarachnoid space. But anterior half is not like that. We all know that the subarachnoid space contains CSF. So the posterior half of the trigeminal ganglion is bathing in CSF, but anterior half is not like that. That is expands into three branches because it it doesn't contain subarachnoid space. Okay, let's discuss about the relations of trigeminal ganglion in trigeminal cave. Here, medially lie posterior part of cavernous sinus and internal carotid artery. Like that, laterally middle meningeal artery lies and superior relation is parahippocampal gyrus and inferiorly motor root of trigeminal nerve and greater petrosal nerve are passed. This is the parahippocampal gyrus of temporal lobe. Let's move on to the branches of trigeminal nerve. From the ganglion, three branches are arising. 
ophthalmic and maxillary, third one is mandibulinum. These three branches pass through the separate foramen to lead the cranial cavity. So, ophthalmic nerve passes through the superior orbital fissure and maxillary through the foramen rotundum and mandibular through the foramen ovale. Here, the motor root of the trigeminal nerve also passes through the foramen ovale with mandibular division. In this picture, upper green colored one is superior orbital fissure, lower green colored one is foramen ovale, between them without coloring, that is foramen rotundum. So here in this picture also we can easily identify the nerves and foramens. Okay, let's discuss about the supply of these nerves. Here we are not going to de discuss the details because there are huge section. But overall, we can see these three branches take main responsible to the to sensory supply of face and skull. So here in this picture, we can see the ophthalmic nerve give rise to supratrochlear, supraorbital, infratrochlear, and external nasal and lacrimal branches. Like that, maxillary give rise to zygomatico temporal, zygomatico facial, and infraorbital. And mandibular nerve branches are auricular temporal, buccal, and mental. So, these name of sub branches indicates the area which they are supplying. So, this is the lateral view of these supplies of nerves in the face and skull. Okay. Now let's discuss about the functional component of trigeminal nerve. According to the supply of the sensory and motor roots, there are two components, special visceral efferents and general somatic efferents. We know there are four nuclei and motor root arises from the motor nuclei supplies the first arc muscles, that means muscles for mastication, temporalis, masseter, and medial and lateral pterygoid and three sensory nuclei that responsible for different sensors that mesencephalic nucleus is responsible for the proprioception and main sensory nucleus responsible for the touch and spinal nucleus for the pain and temperature due to these functions the motor root considers as special visceral f efferent and sensory roots are considered as general somatic efferent next section is trigeminal meniscus tract the fibers arising from the nucleus of the trigeminal nerve form trigeminal lemniscus. This trigeminal lemniscus is uh, one of the ascending pathway. This is join the medial lemniscus ascending tract. Medial lemniscus is the main ascending pathway we have. So they end up in ventroposterior medial nuclei of thalamus and from thalamus they are passing to the cortex. Here in this system, the first order neuron arises from trigeminal ganglion and synapse in main sensory nucleus of the trigeminal nerve. And from there, second order neuron pass to the thalamus as trigeminal lemniscus and third order neuron from thalamus to cortex. What are the clinical importance we have to mention under this nerve? The special one is reactivation of herb zoster syndrome. Herb zoster syndrome is a viral affected disease. After we seizing that disease, the virus is inactivated and reminds patients in neuron ganglion such as trigeminal ganglion. When it gets some suitable environment such as burn or trauma, the virus is reactivated and spreading through the ganglion's division and affect the area that is supplied by the particular division. So here in this picture, we can easily see the affected area is supplied by ophthalmic division. So it is true that 
the virus spreading occurs through the ophthalmic division so what is the other clinical importance that is trigeminal neuraglia trigeminal neuraglia is a chronic acute pain condition that affect the any branch and give rise to acute pain in appropriate area okay friends thank you so much for watching my video and i hope you all have got a clear idea about trigeminal nerve and please subscribe our medary youtube channels and join with us to get continuous videos and continuous study for your successful life thank you very much